Hello and welcome to Getting APIs to Work. In today's episode, we look at APIs and HTTP2. So it's a little bit more technical, but it's important. So I thought I'd cover it. So what is HTTP2 or what is HTTP? HTTP is the Hypertext Transfer Protocol, which is the protocol underlying the web. And it's also the protocol underlying most APIs today. So in the last episode, we talked about what is fundamental for an API. And one of the two things we discussed was it has to be networked. So HTTP is important because it's the networking foundation of most APIs today. And with HTTP2, you can do things a little better. And what I want to talk about today is what that means and how that can impact your API design and your API management. So let's briefly look at where HTTP comes from and how it evolved. HTTP is the protocol that is used on the web to transfer data between browsers and servers. When you open a web page, then your browser requests many different resources to render that web page. These resources are kind of the text itself, images, style sheets, scripting, whatever is needed to present to you the web page in the browser. And these can be many, many resources. In today's complex websites, often you have dozens or, as you can see here, hundreds of resources that actually are needed to show the complete web page. So this means that for the web to function well and fast, it's important that we can do this efficiently. And this is where HTTP and its evolution comes in. Thirty years ago, when the web was invented, web pages were very simple. So it was not such a problem that originally a browser could only make one request per connection. It would get a response and then the connection would be cut. And then for another request, you would need to actually create another connection. That is pretty expensive on the internet, opening these connections and closing them. So when web pages became a little bit more sophisticated with more images and style sheets, then it became clear that this is not a very good model. In 1997, what was introduced was HTTP 1.1. What HTTP 1.1 did was to introduce pipelining. Pipelining means that instead of using the HTTP 1.0 model where you have a client in the server where the request is sent and then the response is received and then the connection is terminated in HTTP 1.1, you have something where the client can send many different requests. The pipeline means basically you can send them and they have an implicit order how they go into this pipeline and the responses have to come back in the same order. Now this already is quite an improvement because you can use the same connection to send multiple requests and you then don't have to wait for each response to come back before you have to send the next request. So this was a good model to improve on the disadvantages of HTTP 1.0 and improve things. But it also became clear that the pipelining model still has some disadvantages one of them being what's called head of line blocking when one of the responses is slow because the server has to still figure out what it's going to send. That holds everything up that is in line after that one response that needs to be sent, right? Because we have this pipelining where things need to be in order. So it became clear that this could be improved and the next model that was invented and that was then standardized in 2015, so quite a while after HTTP 1.1, was the HTTP 2 model, which introduces something that is called multiplexing. So when you look at HTTP 1.1, the pipelining model is I send the requests and I get the responses in the same order as I've sent the request. In HTTP 2 with multiplexing, what you actually have is logically, each request is sent on its own on what is called a stream. So each request goes in its own stream and then each response is sent back in the same stream. 
and streams can basically overlap and mix, right? So you send the requests and then you get the responses in whichever way the server is able to send them. So you don't have this head of line blocking anymore, which means that your responses can be sent faster. So this is one of the two big improvements that HTTP2 has made over HTTP 1.1, multiplexing. The second advantage that HTTP 2 has introduced is header compression. What header compression is that each HTTP message, both requests and responses, has a very simple structure. It has a header and it has data. And the header is made up of individual header fields. Now in HTTP 1.1, all of this goes over the wire in clear text and like it is every single time. That means when you have a header field that repeats in 20 requests or responses, you send this header field in clear text 20 times. In HTTP 2, this is different because for one, the wire format is not text anymore, but it's binary. So things can be compressed better. And the other thing is that there is an actual compression algorithm, meaning that when you send the same header field 20 times, it will only be sent one time, and then the 19 other times, it will just be a reference saying, and here's the same header field as I've sent in my last response or request. Right? This is based on an algorithm called HPAC, and understanding this algorithm at least a little bit is important so that when you design HTTP APIs, you can make sure that you don't get too scared of using header fields. Using header fields is a good thing. It's something that you don't really see enough, I think, in HTTP APIs, and I will talk about more of this in uh, future uh, videos. But for now, I just want to remind you that using header fields is something that is not the same kind of performance issue maybe that a while ago, people thought it was. So in summary, HTTP2 has these two great improvements over HTTP 1.1 that allow you to be less concerned about designing APIs that use a lot of request response interactions and to design APIs that use header fields, right? It's the multiplexing and it is the header compression, which means that you, I think what you can say is you can better take advantage of the full richness of what HTTP gives you without being held back too much by thinking about, but is it efficient? So what does that mean? What it means is that for API designers, don't be afraid of designing chatty APIs. Don't be afraid of designing APIs that use header fields to use a richer design language for your API. This is something that in HTTP2, it works well. There's nothing to be concerned about. So don't be too much intimidated by things such as people writing, it's a chatty API or too much wasted bandwidth by sending headers. All of this actually will not happen in HTTP 2 anymore. So that's the API design part. The second part to keep in mind is also for API management. If you publish APIs, if you make APIs available, make them available through HTTP 2. In most cases, you probably also need to make them available through HTTP 1.1 so that old consumers can still use them but make sure that you enable HTTP2 and that you advertise that it is available and that you maybe also encourage consumers to switch and also make sure that you monitor how many of your consumers are using HTTP 1.1 and how many of them are using HTTP 2 so that you understand how your user population is using the old version and the new version and then can also think about how you can migrate them over from the old 1.1 to the 
to the new 2.0 version. Right? So that can be something where it's very easy for users to get performance enhancement just by making that switch. Right? There's nothing else you have to do, just switch from serving or using it through HTTP 1.1 to HTTP 2.0. And that's really a simple thing to do, but you need to know that this is an option and you need to actively manage it, right? It will not magically happen. You have to be aware of it, switch it on, monitor it, encourage users. So that's all that I wanted to talk about. If you're interested in more details, let me know in the comment section, okay? I'm looking for new topics. I'm always interested to hear what people find interesting. So I definitely did not go into any of the details of HTTP 2.0 but you should understand enough what HTTP 2.0 can do for your API design. So if you do design HTTP APIs, keep it in mind. And that is it for today. So thanks a lot for watching and see you next time.